going to continue to be piece of shit shills, right? And um, just a few hours ago, I got a comment on my video. I just, I just, you know, gave the uh, whatever her name or his name or whatever, uh, Venus 14. I said, share it with Devin, share it with Quasi. Your shill masters, right? Your messiahs. If they can fucking wake somebody up to the fact that the sun is built into you, right? But of course, I ask this, and Coyote's Sky asks this, and other people are asking this, but nobody is answering the call to expose the built-in sun model that I showed in my previous video and that Coyote's Sky had made originally. You get what I mean? So they're a bunch of fucking cowards because this is the ultimate truth regarding the model that works in this realm because there is no working physical model as in circling sun and circling moon that's bullshit okay you need to get that the fuck out of your head okay that's why flat earth is being discredited now is because nobody is just telling the truth about the circling or i mean the um built-in sun because the ae map and all of that has already been thoroughly debunked at this point. Um. Hey, yo. Shut the fuck up. Okay. Look at this shit. This is just crazy. Look at it. It's it's slowly changing from like an octagon shape to a square. That's what we say. And I'm not even sure it's it's even I, I it's so proven to me now it's not even a doubt, but the program itself is called NASA Star. It started in 71, and the idea was to build an artificial light source, okay? We see evidence of this technology today where the Germans are talking about putting up an artificial light system. Again, this is conditioning for you because this story was pretty big on the Internet. So we also see Germany building an artificial sun source. So we have a patent. We have, um, you know, indications that this is what's that they've already started deploying this light system. And number three, we're seeing current construction of replacement technology or new technology that's going to go up to continue to supplement the sun. And again, you're like, Steve, why didn't they tell us about this and everything? Well, because they know that the world would panic if they knew this. So they're slowly leaking it out. You can't just come up to somebody and tell them something that's opposite than they've ever uh, known their whole life. Somebody and tell them something that's opposite than they've ever uh, known their whole life because cognitive dissonance will kick in and they'll actually get violent. People that have to deal with cognitive dissonance will actually get violent. So they have to leak the story out so the public doesn't go freaking out, right? Alaska. Just after 1 o'clock p.m. local Alaskan time today, this planet was viewed from the southeast facing weather cam located at Lena Point, Alaska. <clears throat> after a few frames, the planet fades into transparency from the atmospheric chemicals. Two suns were seen rising this morning over the mountains in Canada viewed from Chicamas Canyon. This south-facing weather cam located at Chicamas Canyon Tower in British Columbia, Canada shows the sun starting out as one single sun rising up over the mountain range. However, after just a few frames, the sun splits into two completely separate suns. Actually, the sun on the left is not really a sun. It is a large planet engulfed in sun glare, which causes it to look like a sun. This is a function of the eclipse concealing equipment. This same equipment also has the ability to completely blur a celestial object, as seen in this video, rendering it completely non-viewable. But the equipment cannot handle as many moons and planets as there are in this current scene. There are two small moons near the sun. Canadian Federal Aviation Weather Cams. These videos are raw, unedited footage.
The first video we are looking at starts out at nighttime so the viewers can see the dimly lit eclipse concealing equipment. It's the only light on the horizon, and if you look closely, you'll see a small round center with straight wings coming out of both sides. Ten minutes later, the concealer jet has risen above the horizon and two light sources are now visible over the mountaintops. The sunlight is now washing out the visibility of the concealing equipment, and the two light sources become more prominent. One function of the concealing equipment is for the sunlight glare to completely engulf the celestial object next to it, which is what we are seeing in this frame. The sunlight begins to contort unnaturally. The unnatural shape becomes more pronounced. The artificial sunlight attempts to engulf the second rising celestial object in glare. Once both objects begin to peek over the mountaintop, it becomes clear that there are two completely separate orbs, one of which is our sun. The smaller one on the left is our sun. The larger one on the right is part of an approaching celestial system not mentioned in mainstream news. As the sun moves to the right, it passes behind the other glowing object. Another function of the eclipse concealing equipment is that an incredibly intense light shines in front of the sun. I call this the flashlight sun. The actual sun passes behind the eclipsing object, with the flashlight sun passing in front, tracking in perfect synchronization with the real sun, so that it's not obvious that there is a planet in front of the sun. Eventually, the sun emerges from the upper right corner of the second celestial object, completely engulfing the celestial object in glare, which is part of the concealment function. Actually, the second celestial object is much closer to the Earth than the sun. This is part of the reason for its enormous size. Once the large orb has broken free of the glare, it is then obscured by a blurring mechanism, which is very effective at hiding celestial objects close to the Earth. Even though it is heavily blurred, it is still visible. However, it will soon become invisible by the blurring mechanism and the transparency caused by atmospheric chemicals. Here is a contrast-enhanced picture of that celestial object, which just rose up next to the sun this morning. Our next video shows a very odd shape of the sun, viewed from Dolphin Manitoba camera. Most likely, the eclipse concealing equipment is currently running, causing this flashlight sun to appear very elongated. Our normal sun would never look like this. Our next video from Canada shows the flashlight sun passing in front of a celestial object so large that it takes nearly four hours to completely pass by the object. As soon as the real sun goes behind the massive eclipsing object, it appears to shrink to one quarter its previous size and the landscape suddenly darkens. Each frame of this video is 10 minutes. It takes nearly four full hours for the flashlight sun to pass over this incredibly huge object. Once passed, the real sun then emerges from behind and the landscape brightens instantly and the sun resumes its normal size, then travels off to the right of the screen. The celestial object is successfully hidden by a combination of the equipment and the atmospheric chemicals. But here you can see it's almost completely disappeared. As the clouds move toward the south, the little white sun appears right now. Center screen just above the midline. And it's a fair distance away from where the yellow sun was. Let's zoom in here as we watch it be obscured by the clouds. After it's obscured, you'll see the white aura. It's distinct bright and white. And then soon you see the yellow sun's aura overtaken. Now this is me adjusting the brightness again, turning it down so that it becomes a little more visible. So here it's obscured and you can see the aura is still white. But now look what happens. The yellow sun's aura overtakes it. Not only that, but it gets extremely bright and big. And the clouds appear.
appear to be pretty unusual around it, but I'm not really sure what that is. We can be sure that this isn't some sort of cloud effect caused by a change in the white sun because as these clouds move over it, the white sun appears again. So if you like this, help me out. 313 asks, can a rainbow appear at night? Oof, uh, uh, that's, a, that's a tough question. I don't know, sometimes when nobody's around, I'll get naked and dance in the rainbow so that the colorful sparkles of happiness will help me forget about my limited lifespan. <laughs> how my gums bleed when I breathe. Uh, but that's okay, I'm fine. I'm fine, shut up. I love rainbows, 100 out of 10. They, they make me tingle. Yes, it can appear at night. It is known as a lunar rainbow. It's produced by the light of the moon instead of the sun, and therefore it's much more difficult to see in the dimmer conditions, often appearing to be white or gray to the naked eye. Bookstash surprised and in awe over that revelation. Uranus was named after the Greek god of the sky, father of Saturn and grandfather of Jupiter. William Herschel discovered it in March 13th, 1781, and subsequently sought to name it after his king, George III. However, the international astronomy community wanted to continue the tradition of naming planets after Greek and Roman gods. Doodle Sister asks, what would the world be like if we had two suns or two moons? Oh, please, please let that happen. Everyone would be screaming, burning alive from the heat of the two suns. My good friend Kyle would be burning first. <laughs> we cannot. I'd watch and laugh. But I wouldn't enjoy it that much, because I guess you'd die. Aw, I knew you had a soft spot for me. Deep down. Oh my, shut up, Kyle. Shut your filthy mouth.